Hi, I'm Shrian. Uh, this is Shuan. Uh, for our final project for 4760, we created a lockbox in which the password is in music instead of just numbers pressed. So here's our lockbox over here. The lock is a solenoid, as you can see. So there's a solenoid internally in the, in the box. Don't, okay, there's the lock. Yeah. And then, and so when you so you lock it, and, it, and yeah. for right now, for this isn't a very secure box because it's cardboard, but it right. comes, but the solenoid comes uh, puts the latch out through there. Yes. Okay. And you've got a keypad. Right. So basically, the way you enter a password is each note on this keypad corresponds to uh, the sound of a note, and we use the Carpal Strong algorithm to simulate the sound of a plucked string. So basically, when you enter sounds, it'll sound like an acoustic guitar in a way. Okay. And then here's our user interface on the LCD. And uh, Shuan, you want to talk about how we store the password a little bit? Yeah, we store the password in, in terms of uh, the rhythm, which the, the time between each button has been pushed, and also the and also the, the different node we push down the button on the keypad. So when you're remembering the key, when you're re remembering the password, you're remembering a tune? Yeah, the, yeah. those turn and the time be in between. Including, including the rhythm, okay. Yeah. All right, so now it's set up to take a new password, huh? Yeah. All right, so why don't you put in a password? Sure. Turn up the volume a bit. Kind of like the Jaws theme song. Now re enter yeah. that password. And now there's also a backspace feature. So I entered one more key than I wanted to, but if you uh, remove, use the backspace key, it'll like discount that rhythm. So basically, uh, you can uh, go back and try and re enter the password. Keep messing up. Sorry. So, do you do you have are the key? Is, it, is this debounced? Yes. So, may, jeez. Do you want to try to see? Yeah. Password? All right. Sorry. Can we start over? Sorry. This is really so. Here, bizarre. I'm going to enter the password. re-enter the same password now to save it. So now the solenoid will be locked. Now I can try and enter the password. Let's say I enter something else. Again. Alright, now I can play a hint. There. Okay. So now I've heard, the, um, I've heard that rhythm, so now I know three keys were pressed, mm -hmm. so now I can enter And the solenoid unlocks. So lo unlocks. Okay. And then basically, you can lock it again by pressing enter, and now you have a password saved, and you can unlock it. Okay, so unlock it again while I watch the solenoid. Sure. All right. Played the hint again. Re-enter password. Open. Okay. Yep. Cool. So it's, it depends upon, the, the idea of this lock is that it depends on the idea that it's easier for you to remember a melody than a series of numbers. Right. Which I, I, I believe is true. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, what about spoofing? Let's say that somebody's watching you do this. It, does it give you any advantage over over a normal keypad? Yeah. So actually, um, when when I was growing up in my neighborhood, uh, the the g garage codes are always four digits. Now, a few times there were uh, people in my neighborhood; their houses got broken into because they'd entered the garage code by just spraying something on the keypad, so they can see the four keys pressed. So you can just try different combinations of those four keys, and then it'll work. But how can you just have a simple keypad and add some more complexity to it? Well, basically, if you're using music, where you check there's a musical component as well as a rhythm component, just knowing the exact keys that were pressed isn't enough. You have to know the timing between the keys pressed, which you know adds so many different combinations. Mm -hmm. So that's that a good really idea. Makes it, yeah. Does it, did uh, 
so uh, what's your tolerance for on the on the timing? How how oh. how accurately so, did, you, did you figure you could yeah. do it? So we set it to we wanted it to be around like 0.8 seconds, and for the demo we increased it to about a second. For tolerance? Yeah. That yeah. seems like a lot. It does seem like a lot. Yeah, but yeah. But our accuracy for the tolerance is in microsecond. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would guess that a person who is pretty good at playing an instrument should be on within, probably within 100 milliseconds. That's true. Um, it does work sometimes, it definitely at... at uh, so you could you could adjust the tolerance for, the, the, for yeah. the ability of the person. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, if we're using a better keyboard... Yeah, we're probably using, using a smaller tolerance. Yeah, uh, we were originally using um, just one of your keyboards, and we ordered this because it looked cool. But um, basically, uh, it, it, the debouncing it was a little bit trickier. We had to we basically we use a state machine in which we check for a key pressed, wait a certain amount of time, and then check again uh, for the keys pressed. And we had to play around with the time once we switched to this keypad because it's a lot more sensitive than uh, one of your keypads. Uh, for for it to really work. Um, uh, really well, it has to be like glued on a flat surface because if you try and hold it up or it's a little bit slippery, it's very easy to add double press buttons. For sure, it's a membrane. It's a right. membrane keyboard, yeah. and uh, so the, you ran it through a through a debound state machine. What right. kind of an interval did you have to have on the state machine? To uh, make I think it, work? it was about fifty microseconds. No, it's got to be much longer than that. Wait, hold milliseconds. On. Fifty milliseconds. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, fifty milliseconds. Okay, yeah, yeah. that I believe. Yeah. Yeah. It was. We wanted it. To, we thought it would be around thirty usually, but um, for the other keypad, that was more solid. But for this, um, yeah, we have 50, about, yeah, fifty milliseconds. Yeah. Okay. Cool.